So I'll start this week, this is part 13, with the second rank of pipes. So we've now got two, we've got the backboard and we've got the Geigen Principle 8 in. The bottom octave of those are wooden. Uh, I don't think we showed that last week, even though we were putting them in last week. But what we have done is we've now put the roller board in. So we've moved the camera down. You can actually see that with the labels poking out from underneath. So just move the camera position. And that's the roller board now fitted into position and ready for the trackers to be installed. Right, you will see on the left the trackers are now installed for the bottom one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eleven notes. And you'll see that the one, two, three, or fifth from the left is brand new. I had to make that uh, because that was broken and. Um, the other half was missing, which is going to happen. Uh, the next one's broken. I've made a new one and I've realised we haven't got any red thread to finish it off. So uh, we're at a standstill there. Um, you'll notice in the second screw hole at the top from the left, I've had to fill that in with wood because the screw just goes round and round. What I'm not going to do is put bigger screws in just because it needs that because the, the threads are worn. So we'll, any, anywhere they, they're going round and round will be properly filled with wood and re-drilled. So what I'm taking the opportunity to do, while well, I haven't got any red thread, I think I've left it on the London Thorpe job, I'll pop up there and, and see tomorrow. Um, I'm going to clean these pallets and I'm going to show you what we do. Because although it's all new, as you know, uh, putting the soundboard up there does involve rolling it around. And although we go to a lot of trouble to vacuum it out and all that, there's bound to be debris from a hundred and something years. So we've got some whimpers on, I think it's number seven and number three. So there must be some dirt on the pad unless there's something scary wrong. So I'm just gonna um, put the camera in a different position so you can see how this is done. Because the first time I did this in my apprenticeship, Mr. Groves, my boss said, um, he said, get me my pallet brush. And I was looking for something with bristles. No, it's a piece of stick with a piece of sandpaper on it. So I'm going to start here simply because you can see it had normally start at one end. And I can't actually see anything on that pallet. And what we've got here is a stick. It's a bit like a normal track with the funny trackers on this. And what it is, I've, met, I've thinned it down to virtually nothing. It's wafer thin at one end and glue that is fine sandpaper and the idea is and you've got got to try not to pull these very far down because you have to unglue them from the back because you'd have to take the whole thing apart and what we're doing is we're pulling it against the and actually there's stuff coming off this even though we're not this one isn't playing up at all so that's that one so we'll go down that's got uh, a piece of debris, but not in a scary position. But I need to pull this off because if you don't, it'll work its way into a scary position. And that's got a piece of debris. So it, it, this is what's going to happen. And we want to do this before we put the rest of the organ together because it's easiest when I can actually get myself in this position. I mean, when these were built, I think people were four stone six, not 18 and a half stone like me. It's not this side playing up at all, it's the other side. So there is debris coming off. A big chunk there. I'll take that off with my finger and you'll see if that got stuck between the pallet and the wood, we'd have the thing open and the note playing all the time. So that is what I'm here to do. 
this afternoon. And hopefully when I get to the other end, the one the couple that are playing up will have some obvious debris on the pallet. So we'll leave it at that and uh, we'll come back to it further on. So I've been continuing to fit the trackers. They're quite slow going because some of them have to be made. Uh, we've got to a stage on the base side, that's the left hand side which we're looking at, where it's confusing as to where they go next. So I think we're going to be having the coupler and keyframe in before I can boldly uh, put them in the wrong position. So we'll start on the right hand side, the treble end, and I've put about the fifth one in. Some of those are missing and I've been making them. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make the next tracker. So I'm going to do one end and then we'll work out the length. So I've got some material here, which is mahogany, and uh, this is, you know, it's difficult and expensive to buy. This is actually a bit of a, of a door frame, believe it or not. So, you know, you buy these things in when the opportunity arises. So I've just cut so quite a way through that, and we're just going to push it through the rest of the way without chopping my fingers off. So we've now got a piece of timber six millimeters square. So I'm just going to sand a length of this. I don't know what that length's going to be, so I'm just going to sand about nine inches. We'll take it from there. So from the treble end, number four is existing. Is that on camera? Not quite. And number two is broken and I've made a replacement. So that's three, that's two. Want the glue to fully dry on that before trimming it and bending it. This has been bodged at some time with a longer wire in just to get away with that. But we can use that piece of timber on one of the shorter ones, which is nice to have something original. So, um, but over to our piece of mahogany. So I've done that, cut that. So what I've got here is an old end. So use this as a, as a jig to drill the new ones in the kind of place it was originally. So I'm just going to place that on the timber. We've got a one and a half mil drill which works out for the 16 gauge. Drill through the two holes, there's a pilot hole. Now we had some wire left over from, let's move this camera down a bit. We had some wire left over from when I did the pull down, so I kept that and these are just right to make these wires and it's the right gauge. So, I'll bend these. I've not seen it done with phosphor rods before. It's usually done with, with copper wire, not as thick as this. But you know, that's, that's how they've done it and that's how we're replicating it. I think we're about there with that. Just make sure this fits on the original first. Yes, it does, it fits perfectly. So normally trackers are thinner than this, like three millimeter by 10 millimeter. They're kind of like that. But then I've not seen them this shape before, but you know, different makes, different ideas. 
you know, I've done this 40 years and you see something different, you usually have to shape the end. Don't have to shape the end on these. So with the red thread which we use, I'm going to put that in the top hole. That sounds like some posh person from the 1920s, doesn't it? Top hole, old bean. And then we'll poke the wire with that red thread in, so we've got an anchor point for the red thread. I'm not drilled it through, what am I doing? I've just done half a dozen of these before this demonstration and whenever the camera's on, there's the cock up. Now this red thread, I have mislaid my two reels of it. It's not cheap. It's about uh, 14 pounds plus VAT. For those of you outside the UK, VAT is the purchase tax, which is 20%. And so it isn't cheap and I've mislaid both my rolls. So what I've had to do is I telephoned another organ builder at Lincoln, 32 miles away. I said, you haven't got any red thread and borrow a few yards off, have you? And he says, as a matter of fact, I'm on a job about 10 miles from you. So I drove over and I borrowed this knotted lump of red thread off him. And it's getting me out of the quagmire, so to speak. So in, this is how these are bent in. It's gone in and bent over and then we've got this end and what we have to do is to wrap this round about 10 times and this is called whipping and there's people who can do this neater than me and Mr Chippy's one of them so 10 times I think sufficient Put a knot in it. And then when we're done, I need to glue this with the animal glue. So you've got a result then like that. It's not going anywhere then. And these are all done like that, the originals. So I'll just cut that off. I've managed to unknot enough red thread to do that one. So uh, I ordered, it's now Wednesday, and I ordered the red thread on Monday, I'm still waiting. I've ordered it from two suppliers as well. <laughs> so I'm just gonna bend this so that we can temporarily insert it. So there needs to be enough room for the eye of the pull down. So I'll bend it to there. And then we'll cut off the excess. So it needs to be about there. Well, probably a bit less. So we're left with that, which if you look, is that's the 150 year old one. And this is our one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just check that size and make sure that I'm going to cut this length and do the other end so that it fits properly. Uh, some of the original ones I wouldn't say fit ideally but we are keeping them in place because there should be enough latitude on the threaded wires that go into the coupler frame uh, to to kind of take up that error or tolerance I don't know I mean at the end of the day it's been in three previous buildings this is its fourth installation and parts can get changed these are easy to break when you're taking organs out. And that's, I mean, this organs come out more or less playable. And uh, you know, this is what happens. So we, we do get these broken in transit, especially when they're brittle and they're 150 plus years old. So I'm gonna measure that and then we'll uh, do the other end. 
So there we are with the finished one, cut to length and both ends done and glued. So we're now, we'll go and install that. So to conclude this week, is it part 13? Or is it part 14? I don't know where we are. Anyway, this is the uh, final bit. We've just hit Saturday morning. I wanted to get this out really yesterday. As you know, we've had two radiograms and one was fast tracked. He's taking a bit of time off the four hours a day I'm supposed to be doing on this. We've still got the one from London to do. There's a fault on the amplifier, which is more than overhaul. It's, uh, there's actually a, a fault fault. We just need to look into that. But I need to have the 2018 off the other bench. We can't really fault find in here with taking transistors out. So the pipe makers at Leeds have uh, telephoned me. They've said the oboe is ready from overhaul. So it's only been a couple of weeks. They didn't say it was going to be about eight weeks. Um, so we'll pop over there on Wednesday and pick that up and give them a lot of money. And we'll take that dodgy pipe um, from the Tennessee Geigen principle, or is it C sharp? Yeah, it's C sharp, because the, the foot's damaged on it, the, the actual toe, uh, and they need to remake that pipe for me. And we're going to be ordering the brand new rank of 15s for the grate, which got pinched in 1919 and replaced by the Dulciana. So in view, we've got a brand new reel of a red thread from the organ wholesalers. So uh, the bit which uh, Chris kindly passed on to me has got used entirely. And despite it all being in a terrible knot, I rescued all but about nine inches of it. So we've done a lot of trackers and we'll just conclude by going over to that. So we'd started the base end last week and we've been doing the treble end this week remade an awful lot of them and the ones that don't look like they're remade that in fact have been remade um, what uh, happens is if they're broken at the end we can use the shortened length in a different position where it's also broken so 50% of the ones that are in are actually remade from a longer length so uh, that's what I tend to do to try and keep it as original as possible uh, the one with the tag on, uh, or is it two? Yes, it, it, it's, we've kind of got one short there. Um, one of the problems was one, of the, one or two of the rollers were out, um, and uh, I think the counting went a bit uh, awry there, but uh, as long as I get the, the lengths correct, it really doesn't matter. Um, so the, the, the more difficult ones to guess where they go are in the middle. And of course that's the most difficult bit because the blooming great big uh, key action, coupler action, um, slots into the frame in those two tenons there. And that it will be the next thing, getting that out of storage and totally dismantling it, dismantling it and rebuilding it. And then you'll see the keyboards go in. So there we have it. Uh, you'll realize I've taken the face board off so the pallets are exposed. That's just so I know that um, We've got them closing properly and all that. I did replace spring number seven from the right. That's another thing we had come from the wholesaler. It was a bit skew if I think it was, it was trying to push the pallet to one side. And that was the one we were getting a whimper from. So hopefully that's gone. So there we are. That concludes this part. And we'll see you for more fun next week. Thanks for watching.